We can all see why Cyprus is great as a holiday destination. What are you telling investors as to why now is a great time to invest? Look, you have an economy that's come out of a what can only be described as a cardiac arrest in 2013 and has posted four years of serious growth, 4% per annum for the last couple of years, and it doesn't look like abating. Uh, now, clearly, the, the, the sovereign is the lead indicator of whether or not the country is doing well, and as of last Friday, it received its first posting for investment grade. Mm -hmm. So we're, we've moved back out of junk status into investment grade. Grade. The banking system is a warrant on the economy. The economy is growing well. It's broad based in its recovery. Unemployment is falling. House prices are stabilizing and rising. There are a lot of indicators which suggest that this is a good time to be invested in Cyprus now. Yeah. We've been saying that for a while, but actually it does feel like the momentum is with the country. What does the country being investment grade mean for Bank of Cyprus and Cypriot lenders in general? Look, it's a confidence issue. I mean, the, the banking system, as I said, is a warrant on the economy. Mm. Uh, if you want to play a Cypriot recovery, the best place to play it is in a levered investment. A levered investment in any economy is a banking system. Um, and actually, if you look at the track record of the banking system with reduction in non-performing loans, shrinking of the banking system by from eight times GDP to more like four now, the uh, not no reliance on, on foreign uh, deposits, the attraction of foreign direct capital into the country over the last three years, there are a lot of reasons why Cyprus actually is now poised to grow across a range of economies, not just tourism. Mm. And on the non-performing loans, so after the sale of non-performing loans to Apollo, uh, Bank of Cyprus able to improve its capital position, but the NPL exposure remains high. What's the next step? in de-risking your balance sheet? Well, we started with more than 15 billion of non-performing loans, and just to put that in context, that's about 100% of GDP at the time. We've reduced that by 10 billion from 15 to five, and it's covered by about 50% provisions. So we're down from net 10 billion to net two and a half mm. in four years, 3.2% per quarter for 13 quarters, then plus a 15% GDP trade on the, on, with, with Apollo. So look, I think um, we're on the way to getting it done. We've got a third of the, of the, of the position left to do and we've got plans across each of those uh, buckets. Any plans or could we expect any moves before the end of the financial year? No. Look, these things take time. You, yeah. If you look at the Apollo trade, we sold more than five billion of contractual balances, three billion of balance sheet value and for one and a half billion. That's 14,000 individual loans on 9,000 pieces of collateral. There's a lot of work involved in putting that to bed and you have to reshape the organization to go forward to manage what's left and that takes time. But, but we're um, confident that we have plans to, uh, to finish the job. Yeah, understood. Now, has there been any changes to your EP? EPS target for 2018? No, look, when you do a dramatic trade, which is significant to your balance sheet, you have to reset your business model. You have to understand how your cost structure and your revenue model is going to look, and we will re-guide later in the year. But you'll see that the bank has been generating, pre this trade, about 10 cents EPS per quarter. You know, that was where our guidance was. We haven't chosen to re-guide, but we've given the market all the information necessary to strip out the bits we've removed. Mm. John, look, we're 10 years from the crisis. Just, um, you know, last week we were talking about life after Lehman and still the phrase doom loop comes up when you talk about Europe and the European banking system. Are we any closer to resolving that doom loop for European banks and sovereigns in Europe? Look, I think Europe wasn't ready to react to a crisis in a, in a coordinated way back in 2007, 8, 9 and 10 indeed. And as each sovereign crisis unfolded after each of the banks' crisis started to unfold, uh, we had what could only be described as a relatively haphazard response to the crisis. Mm. Um, and I still think we're finding our feet in terms of the crisis management for Europe and let's hope that we now have the mechanisms in place through the SRB and a variety of other uh, sort of supranational mechanisms to make this work better. But we've been slow. We, we, the US was a was a perfect example of get your act together, get it done and move on. Yeah. The US is no longer talking about the banking crisis. They're talking about S&P at, at all time highs. They're talking about unemployment at all time lows. Mm. They're talking about things that we would only dream about talking about. And indeed, the banking sector has handed global investment banking to the Americans. Yeah. Political risk uh, still still rife, though. I mean, we've been talking about Brexit all morning, this intractable issue of the Irish border. Will there be any impact on economic growth in Cyprus and therefore on the Bank of Cyprus if there's a no-deal Brexit or any other worst-case scenario? Our, our fundamental, I mean, there's a great history between a, a former colony. 1960 was when mm. Cyprus received its independence from, from Britain. There is a there's 1.2 million tourists a year that come from Britain. That has actually been growing, not, not weakening during this sort of uh, the Brexit discussion. Uh, so there's no, no suggestion at a, at a data level that Brexit is at this stage causing issues for uh, Cyprus, UK into the future in terms of the shape of what exports look like. But 
uh, Brexit is all about confidence and the relationship between a European Union member, Cyprus and Britain will no doubt be negatively impacted if we don't solve this problem sensibly. Mm. Another geopolitical issue I just want to discuss is the threat of more sanctions on Russia. We haven't yet has the, had the worst case scenario of some of the bills like the Deter Bill for example but has that had any impact on your business? Yeah look for sure the um, I mean, Cyprus has a natural affinity through history through the church and through just 40,000 people in Limassol alone speaking Russian. Mm. 1.2 million Russian tourists come to Cyprus every year and have done so for 30 years. Now, the, um, so, so there, there has been an interruption of confidence with Europe and Russia and some of that has impacted our business. We hold ourselves to the US Patriot Act and to all of the compliance standards that you would expect a bank to hold itself to and that means that we do less business with the former Soviet Republic uh, republics. Now, we, we People talk about Cyprus being a major place for Russian money. This is not true. Six percent right. of our deposits come from Russia. We have more Greek deposits than we do Russian deposits. We have more deposits from places in Europe.